It's a six game Wednesday night in the game. Take a break for a second, get your hockey fix. My name is Andrea Sachinka and you're watching the KHL Update. We begin our journey in Helsinki, Finland, where Sergei Kudrovsky gets to start for Boris as the visa Ryan Zapolsky and Yakiret. We'll pick it up from the second, the Jokers are on a power play and they get the job done. Ali Tolvanen plants himself in the right circle, gets the puck from Simon Lepisto and slams it home for his 13th goal of the year. Rookie Sensation scores again. Jokiret takes a 1-0 lead. Three minutes later, Boris bring it back to square one. Artem Lehotnikov gains the zone, shoots from the high slot and scores his first career KHL goal. It's a 1-1 hockey game now. Two minutes after that, Boris grabs the lead. Nigel Dawes gets in position and sends it past Ryan Zapolsky's Superman style. Wow, Nigel Dawes with an absolute beauty. That gives Boris a 2-1 lead. Nine seconds of regulation now. Jokic are out there with the extra attacker looking for the equalizer. And they get it. Brian O'Neill beats Sergei Kudrovsky to make it a 2-2 tie. Better again and Niklas Jensen draw the assist. We're going to overtime. Want to guess who gets to be the hero in this one? It's not that difficult, actually. Nigel Dawes punishes Ryan Zapolsky for this clumsy play, scores his second goal of the game, 24th goal of the season, and wins it for Boris. Another spectacular effort for Boris' captain. They win 3-2 in overtime. We travel to Podolsk, Moscow region now, where Vitas take on SKA St. Petersburg. Home team is a heavy underdog in this one. They beat SK just twice in 21 games in KHL history. SK swept Vitas in the first round this spring out route to their second Gagarin Cup as well. But it's Vitas who scored first in this one. And it's a goal to remember. Croatian forward Borna Renzulic has his first career KHL goal on a power play. He used to play for Colorado Avalanche and Vancouver Canucks. Late in the period now, Vitas on an up man rush. Artem Schwetzer-Gavoy gives the puck to Roman Horak. Horak shoots and rings up the pipe and goes back into play. It goes the other way now. Dmitry Maltov takes a shot. Igor Saprikin has a piece of it. And Victor Tikhonov buries the rebound. It's a tie game. Heartbreaking last minute of the period for Vitas. Early in the second period, Captain Alexis Semenov gets a minor for cross checking. He doesn't like the call one bit. And the ref says, okay, well, then you're gone. Alexis Semenov gets a game misconduct, a questionable call to say the least. Late in the period, SKA explode with three unanswered goals. First, Alexander Borobana finds the loose puck in this chaos, takes a shot and scores in his own rebound. SKA take a 2-1 lead. 90 seconds later, Nikolai Prohorkin finishes off the pass and play to score his sixth of the year. Slava Voina for Nilek Olicek with assists. And a little later, Vladislav Gavrikov scores his first goal of the year in first in SKA jersey to give his team a 4-1 lead after 40 minutes of play. Vitas get a goal back early in the third frame as Alexei Makayev misses his 11th of the year unassisted. Even Matt Max is going to get a flex when he sees from the stands. But that's as close as they can get on this one. SKA beat Vitas 4-2 on the road. We're now in Moscow, where Spartak face Sibir. The red and whites were first. Just under three minutes in, Ben Maxwell nets his eighth goal of the year, while Ryan Stoll and Lukas Rydal draw the assist. Five minutes into the second period, they double their lead as a score in a power play. Alexander Kokolchuk curls, shoots, and finds the back of the net. That's his sixth. Spartak lead 2 0 now. Late in the period, another power play and another goal for Spartak. Alexander Gergachov scores his second goal of the year in first in Spartak jersey. The goal counts after video review. Artem Pachangalov gets his second assist of the game on the play and it's 3-0 Spartak after 40. Late in regulation, Evgeny Kulik covers up the puck in the crease and the ref gives Sibir a penalty shot. Alexander Bergstrom gets to take it and he is robbed by Nikita Gispalov. He pulls off a Hashik style save and Spartak still lead 3-0. And a few minutes later, Slava Lyshenko puts a cherry on top as he scores his fifth goal on an empty net to seal the deal. Gennady Spalov stops 34 shots for his second shutout of the year, and for the first time this season, Spartak wins their fourth consecutive game. 4 0 is your final. We're still in Moscow, where another game takes place up north. Red Army defend the ass against Dynamo Minsk. The red and blue open up the score in 8 minutes in as they convert on a power play. Alexander Popov misses force of the year on a broken play.
Early in the second period, this for another one, and it comes shorthanded. Vanteleggen steals the puck from 22-year-old rookie Roman Zukov, and that's his third of the year. Two minutes later, Telegin has an assist to that early goal as it beats Mikhail Gugurenko for his sixth of the season. Redard only 3 0 now. Peter through the period, Dynamo scoring a power play to get a goal back. Charlotte Glass celebrates his first goal of the year. But Red Army still have the last word in this one. Valerie Dichushkin nets another shirty early in the third period, and that's game. Red Army enjoy an easy win on all eyes. 4 1 is the final. We go to Bratislava, Slovakia now, where Slovan challenge Lokomotiv. The team's trade powerful goals in the opening period of play. Seven minutes in, Zach Bojcik gives the puck to Colby Ganaway. Ganaway feeds him right back in the slot, and Bojcik gets his second marker of the year. Late in the frame, Brandon Kozin gets the puck from Stefan Cromwell, and he snipes it home from on top of the right circle. That's his sixth, and it's a 1-1 tie at 20. Five minutes into the second period, Loco grabs the lead. Nila Lubushkin drives it on that from the right wing, Dennis Pesola finds the rebound and dishes it over to Nila Falka, who scores his eighth goal of the year. Lokomotiv lead 2 1 after 40. Early in the third period, Slovan bring him back to even. Boris Kaletsky nets an absolute beauty while both teams were down to man. I can't believe he pulled up this between the legs move down low. And that's his first career KHL goal, too. This is nothing short of sensational. But Loka still go on to win it in regulation. The kid line gets the job done. Igor Korshkov with the assist, Paolo Kraskowski with the dagger. Lokomotiv with their third consecutive game. 3 2 is the final on this one. Our last game of the day takes place in Nizhny Novgorod. Torpedo play house to Ugra. And as often as the case with Torpedo, there isn't much scoring. One team breaks the deadlock middle through the second period as Mikhail Gugorov risks it home from the right circle. Third period now, Jan Morsen gets the puck at the left wing. He carries it in on a two on one rush, shoots, and Nilo Proskurkov stops him with a fantastic glove save. Yugra is still very much alive. And they tie it up late in regulation. Alexander Ugolnik puts it on net from the point, and it goes in. It's a 1 1 tie, and we're going to the shootout. Maxim Pestushko and Artem Bolanski score for you. Reproskirkov makes four saves, and the visitors get the extra point. 2 1 is your final. And that's it for the LKHL update. Do come back tomorrow for three more games, including Salavati Life Magnitka and Dynamo Riga vs. Avangard. My name is Andrea Sachinka. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.